on the Real Housewives of Orange County. Ah! I want to whoop it up. Bring it, sister. Here's to being in Ireland. We're going to position you guys right here. Ah! Ah! Sexy, boom, 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 boom. boom. Mm -hmm. You like to have fun, don't you? I think the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. <laughs> Kelly, I think she's a whoop it up girl. I'm a little nervous right now. Because you're holding liquid nitrogen. And sperm. I am going to get pregnant with IVF. Go, go, do it, do it! Baby, 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 baby. Terry's leaving on Mother's Day. Don't blame me, I didn't schedule it. You can unschedule it. You say yes to everyone but us. I'm honestly a terrible father. <laughs> Gloves are off. Let's go. Sometimes I just want to slap a bitch. Now well, you're a freaking <laughs> is what you are. This is low face bull. Brooks, it's Vicky. I believe you. I love you. She loves you. You're a fucking scumbag because you don't come clean. You're a cheater and a bad guy. Get away from me. You can apologize for your shit. I have. Oh, you have not. It's not over, Vicky, is it? Is it really over? I'm not time. scared of you. I'm not scared of you. She told me she stalks him. Yeah. I didn't push you to win a fair. Are you kidding me? I'm done. I need an EMT here. Oh my god. Only one way to start this. It's like, wow. Woo! Hearing that footage just makes me get chills all over. That was crazy. Which part of it? All of it. Did I really live all that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> What is, what, what's going on with Vicky this season? I have no idea. You know, every day it's a new day and it's a new journey. But um, this season, I'm coming back from a pretty bad year. I had a lot of losses last year. Um, but this year, I asked for forgiveness to move on from last year. Um, to, for the record, I never lied. Um, just get that out in the open. Um, but I have my daughter coming back this year. You're going to see some health scares with her. I really focused my energy on my family this year because the girls are the girls, you know. Uh, we do film together, we are friends, but you know, they had issues with me, I had issues with them, and we have to be able to learn to forgive and move on. Uh, some of them did, some of them didn't. So you're gonna see that happening this year. We go on two trips, you saw the rollover with the ATV. Uh, that was probably one of the scariest moments in my life. I thought that if they looked, wanna- That looks I terrifying. Thought, I thought if Bravo wants to kill me off, this is a great way of doing it, you know? <laughs> So fortunately, obviously, I lived, and Kelly lived, and Tamara lived, and Heather lived, and uh, I think it really brought us really close. It was a great uh, bond and reunion that we had, that experience together. So a lot happens this season. Now, when you say, for the record, you never lied, are you referring to the Brooks uh, developments? I don't really want to talk about him anymore because I, it's been a year. He deserves his privacy. Uh, I've moved on. but. Yeah, between the editing and the girls, they were just stuck on uh, schematics and words that I said that, uh, number one, I, I just loved them. You know, if somebody tells you they're sick, you're not going to ask for their record. So I don't know anybody in this room or anybody that's seeing this online, would you ever say to your partner, can you prove it, that you're sick? It's not normal behavior. So uh, the more they started to um, question me, the more I questioned him, and then he pulled back. He said, I'm not sharing anything with you. It's not going to go just between us. And I always wanted to prove them wrong. So him and I started having issues. And then obviously we know what happened. We, he broke up with me, actually. So we're in a better place now. He's got his life. I've got my life. And you know, I had to pick up the pieces from it. It was a, it was a pretty brutal time. And especially playing out on TV. Yeah, like in normal life, nobody would ever ask you. Like, how many of you have ever had a partner or a friend that was sick? You wouldn't say, oh, by the way, I don't think you're really sick. I need your login, please. Yeah, like, it's so weird. Um, but it was good for TV. We had the highest rated season ever on the Houses of Orange County. And at the end of it, I was the one that was crumbling, you know? People were all making a mockery of me and laughing at me and saying I was a liar. And, you know, I'm a businesswoman. I'm licensed by the Department of Insurance. It's very serious. I've lost five friends in the last three years from cancer. It's nothing funny. Um, I'm actually turning it for the good. I've started a charity called Kill All Cancer. Uh, you can visit the website, but I'm, I'm actually taking the awareness of cancer and going to turn it around and do something good for it. 
And on a happier note, my favorite scenes with you are when you're a grandma. When I'm a grandma and when I'm whooping it up. Don't you guys want to see me whooping it up? Whooping it up right? is fine. And I do but love I, the but, party but, scenes. But when you're but with my, Brianna, my come love, on. My love is my grandbabies and my family. And that's where I focus my energy this year. So your daughter moves back to Orange County. She does. And how does that go? Amazing. So I actually... Did she move back in with you? She's in with me and the boys right now. Um, she... I bought her a house in, in Ladera Ranch near me. Um, her husband is getting military retired, so they have that transition that they're doing. She's actually in Oklahoma right now for two weeks, um, getting the house packed up. And uh, they'll be moving as a family uh, to Orange County permanently in about two months. But she is staying with me right now with the babies, and I love every morning. I get to wake up Troy and Owen and get them ready for daycare or school or the pool. It's just, it's like I got my life back. I got my family back. And that was really my focus this year. What's been the most both rewarding and difficult aspects for you of filming the show for this many seasons? The hardest part, which I'll start with, is really trying to stuff what's going on inside your own personal life and not have it be exposed. You know, when I filed for divorce for Don five years ago, I did it off season. And I got out of my office, and there was news reporters outside my office. And I thought, why are they, who are they here for? And then they started coming after me. I'm like, why are you here? And they said, we just saw the court documents that you filed for divorce. And, you know, that was when I wanted to just crawl in a hole and just be quiet. Uh, but unfortunately, you put yourself out on the public, you know, eye, and you're going to be having to deal with it, even on personal times like that. And it was a really hard decision for me to divorce Don. Uh, and I jumped into to a new relationship right away. I didn't date anybody else. And that lasted five years. So I'm a monogamous dater. So I was married for 30 years between my first husband and my second husband. And then I've been with my previous relationship five years. So I've taken the last 10 months to just stop, smell the roses, as my mother said, and when you're least expecting it, you'll meet somebody incredible. And so that's what I've chosen to do. I did not go on any dating sites. I just really took time for myself and to get to know me. Because uh, I've always been taking care of people, whether it's my kids or past husbands or relationships. I, I've always taken care of everybody else. And I stopped to take care of me this time. And it, it's been really beneficial for me. And what's been the most rewarding part for you of filming this? Because you the, are the OG yeah. of the OC lady. It's crazy, right? I think it's the original gangster. I don't know if I'm not a gangster, but I'll call it original. Um, I think the most rewarding part is having your life documented, you know, and the experiences that I've had. I would have never had if I was just still working at Koto Insurance and being a mother and grandmother. Um, I now do speaking circuits. I'm able to speak to hundreds of thousands of people. I'm not afraid. Years ago, if somebody told me I had a microphone in my hand and I talked to people, I'd be like, you're nuts. There's no way. But my confidence is stronger. Um, I have a voice in what my beliefs are. And I think that the viewers see that. I am somewhat opinionated. I may be overserved at times, and I do get a little tipsy at times, but I work harder than any other woman I know, and I love my family. I think that's my, my first and only stance, is that my family is my everything. Now, of the current women on the show, yes. who are you closest to? Huh. You have to remind yourself. Okay, let me see who I'm filming with this year. <laughs> so, um, Kelly, our new girl on the right, very cool. You may or may not understand her personality right out of the gate, but she's authentic, and she's real, and she came in with no agenda. She didn't know any of us. Um, so uh, her and I have a common esthetician, so that was kind of cool that we had that common relationship. I'm close with Tamara, even though right now she's mad at me, but you know what? I was like, mad at her, Like, you guys always, man. You so, guys so have, like, you, more you know arguments no, than... No, she's always, she's always mad at me because I always do or say something wrong, but if I took record of all the things that she's done and said about me, uh, it's a little lopsided. So I choose to forgive. I love Tamara. Right now, she, like I said, she's mad at me. So so what? You know, we film together. We have a great, um, we have a great bounce back personality with each other. I don't know what, chemistry. We have good chemistry together. So I'm hopeful that she'll be able to forgive, kiss me, move on to the next fight. I mean, it's sincerely like every time I turn around, we're in a fight and I'm like, oh God, did I say that? Okay, yeah, I did. Um, but. I care for her. I love her. Um, Shannon's not liking me right now either, but I'm okay with it. Um, I'm not really happy with her either. Uh, Megan and I are good. Heather and I are fine. Um, but 
you know what? I've got a whole circle of friends outside that of aren't this on the show yeah. that aren't on the show that don't want to be on the show. And I'm really blessed. I've got great people in my life. Now, how does the show work? Do you text the producers your schedule for the week and they kind of, at this point for you, they kind of figure out what they want to film, what they don't want to film? Uh, I'm a little unusual to most of the other cast members. They don't have an outside career except Tamara. Um, Megan doesn't. Heather doesn't. Heather actually has her podcast. Shannon doesn't. She yeah, Heather doesn't. kind of acts sometimes, right? Yeah. 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 So Heather does work. Um, she, obviously, Tamara does work as well. So I have a schedule that the producers see. Um, they see my schedule, and then they'll block out times. So they're like, Vicki, your schedule's so busy because I work. I have a, my Coto Insurance. Um, I see clients. I do seminars and so on. So they'll, they'll schedule it out, or they'll say, two weeks from now, I need you for five days. I'm like, can't do it, you know? Or they'll say, okay, what about the following week? I don't see anything on the calendar yet. I'm like, you better book it now because it's going to book up. So that's how the producers and I can communicate through my Google Calendar. And if they have an opening, they block it out. How much, I mean, so, so basically this show is just, it, they film what happens. Yeah, they'll put us in situations. That's, like, and that's what I was going to ask. We're going to yeah. go to dinner together. I'm like, oh, great. Or we're going to go on a four-day trip together. I'm like, oh, great. I know there's going to be a fight. Like, I just, I'm prepared for something to happen. And I, I try to go in with just raw, good place. And I usually come out crying or something. I don't know. I cry more doing the housewife show than I have in my entire life. So... <laughs> You know, uh, it's so silly, but I, I take it so serious that when somebody's upset with me or mad at me or I've got to defend myself, I just I just take it so serious because it's like that's not how it happened, and I want you to like me, and I don't want to be fighting. Um, I think I'm fought out. You know, I'm just You're really fought, fought out. out. Yeah, I, I I try to get the strength back every year to to fight and stick up for myself. But this year I, I lay down. I'm like you know what I well, can't fight. And you guys like I mean you you have these dinners and you discuss like super heavy topics. It's so crazy. It's like, like who comes up with these topics? I don't know. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, it'll come out from left field. It's like oh my god, now what? You know, can't we just have a nice dinner and talk about shoes? Yeah, but you know what? They're smart enough to know that's not going to stick for TV. So it doesn't. You know, we want to talk about stuff that they you don't want them to talk about. You know. So it, it comes out one way or the other. It's like, huh, here we go again. So why have you stayed on the show all, the, all these seasons? We were joking about this backstage. Why not? You got one life to live. It's been a great experience. Um, I feel like my story isn't over yet. You know, my viewers said, please come back. Please come back. My fans, the people that saw me so hurt last year, I was just dying last year. I, I, there were mornings that I woke up and I called my assistant, Linda, and said, I'm not coming into work today. Block me out for the next four days. And I would just lay in bed and cry. And I wanted to call my mom. <laughs> Couldn't call my mom. My whole family lives in Chicago. My daughter was living in Oklahoma. I felt completely abandoned. And I journal a lot and I pray a lot and I read my Bible a lot. And God gave me the strength to open up the blinds and just say, you know what, you're not done yet. And it was through his grace that I really was able to get back up, get out of bed, and just really look at what mistakes I made, because I did. I, I'll own it. Um, but I didn't make all the mistakes. You know, my partner did. And so I can't be blamed for decisions he made. And I'll, I can truly say at the end of my life, I loved him. I believed him. I loved him. And who isn't guilty of loving somebody that betrayed them? Everybody. I think we've all experienced right. that. Got to move on. See, and that's a side of you we don't really see on the show, the spiritual, yeah. quiet, introspective side. My alone time is probably my best time. And I built a balcony off my bedroom, and it's a serenity garden for me. And right over looking into my backyard is a prayer garden for my mom. And I did a wind chime, and I did a beautiful waterfall, and I did white rocks and a cherub. And, and it's my time that I talk to her. I mean, my dad's been gone 19 years, so... My mom just decided to check out. My dad had Alzheimer's, and so he left me a long time ago. Um, but my mom was not sick. And so when she died last year, I was pissed because I wasn't ready to have her be gone. I had no warning. I had nothing. She, you know, she just lay down on her bed and, and died. Um, so I realized that whatever she has given me in regards to strength that I had to pursue and carry on, but no, you're not going to see me praying. You're not going to see me journaling on the show because that's not good TV. 
but that's me. You know, I have a, I have a very strong faith, and um, I believe everything happens for a reason. And I believe I met my previous partner for a reason, and he gave me some great, great insight on life, but it wasn't meant to be. If it did, we'd still be together. So um, I've learned from that relationship what to look for in signs, how not to be betrayed as well, how to not really trust 100% anymore. I think I've got my guards up. I got, I'm like kind of Teflon right now. So, you know, I'm hopeful that I can put those guards down and be a little bit more humble and, you know, not so guarded. But I, I've never hurt so bad in all my life. Last year was, 2015 was the worst year since I was born. Well, here's yeah. to a better 2016. Yeah, right? Amen to and that. And I got to ask you, what's been the craziest trip you guys went on? Well, we went on two crazy trips. You saw a little bit of a rollover, right? Just a little tiny rollover. Not on my bucket list to do. Um, but we did go to Glamis. We went ATVing, and we got in a very terrible accident. I was life flighted out, uh, unconscious, and um, Tamara went to the hospital. I was by helicopter. Um, that was crazy. That was a, a trip that was not supposed to be that way. Obviously, we were supposed to be out there having fun. Uh, my bucket list is checked. I'm never going ATVing in Glamis ever again. And those of you that do, when they give you the warning signs, you might die. Like, really take it seriously. Like, the, the instructors are like, we've been known to roll these things. You may or may not roll. And if you do, just cross your arms. Don't want any amputees with their arms outside the, the ATV. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? This is like a vehicle on the sand. Next thing you know, we're rolling. So um, that was crazy. Um, our second trip, which you are going to see this year, is Ireland. And I might have been behind the bar serving Guinness beers, and I might have given Tamara some Jameson, a couple of shots too many. So you know what happens when Tamara and I get over oh. We have fun. So that's what happened in Ireland. Was anyone dancing on the bar? I think Tamara did. Good. So What about looking back over all the seasons? What's been the most insane trip? Wow. Um, I don't know if you guys watched last year. We went to Tahiti. Uh, how fun was that when I got a little bit overserved again? And by the way, I'm not an alcoholic. I, I, I only drink on these trips, and a couple nights a week, I'll have a gla one glass of wine. But these trips make you just do stupid things. I mean, you're, you're on TV, and you're like, oh, my God, I want to whoop it up all the time. So when I went swimming with my clothes on, the poor production company was like, really, Vicki, you lost all the mics. I'm like, I'm sorry. It was so much fun. It'll be a great footage. you know. But I think every time you put four or five or six women together on a trip, there's going to be some fun. I mean, going to Andalay is my favorite place in Puerto Vallarta. Um, I love Puerto Vallarta. I love going there. I love whooping it up. So I work so hard. My days are 15-hour days that when I get off or go on camera or, or film a trip, I just want to have fun. And I want to be a little overserved because my inhibitions come out. And I just, I don't want drama. But I, it does follow me everywhere I go. So. Hey Amen. Amen. You're, not, right. you're never boring. Right. Take that. That's right. What's, uh, is there anything off limits when they're filming? Well, I don't do nude scenes. And if I do, it was by accident. Um, uh, obviously, I, I'm 54. Nobody wants to see this thing naked, even though it's really kind of cool right now. I, I lost 22 pounds, so I'm pretty proud of it. But um, I, I just don't want to be inappropriate. I want to be age appropriate. I want to have class always. I want to always instill good values for for women. I'm a businesswoman. I want to encourage women to be, you know, somewhat independent, whether you're married or not. You got to figure out a way to make your own money because one day you may be single whether it's due to death or divorce or something. So I always encourage and, and support women. Um, and you know what? I, I, I like the independence I've been able to have my whole time in relationships. I've never been... Yeah, like you're always the one in control. Like you yeah. have your house, you have your job. Yeah. Like you don't yeah. have to depend on anything. I just bought myself a new Maserati, which you're going to see this time. Oh, Vicky. I know. I... I went out shopping for shoes, and I ended up buying a new car. It was so silly. It was a Saturday all by myself. I'm like, I'm just going to test drive this car. Next thing you know, I'm putting it in my driveways. But I love that I'm able to do that for myself. I don't never had a man that supported me. or It's not that I wouldn't want it. Um, I just haven't, I haven't had that in my life. I have, that card has not been dealt to me. So what it's taught me is you know, everything that I do, I respect. I respect money. I respect my time. And I don't take it for granted, you know. Um, before we turn over to the audience, how did you come up with, tell us the history of, the backstory of, woohoo! I have no idea. My kids still laugh at me about it because I think it was when I surprised Michael in Colorado 
Um, and he was so mad at me that I surprised him. How many of you have watched that show where I surprised Michael in Colorado with a case of beer and, you know, he put me upside down and did this keg stand or whatever that was called. And afterwards I was like, woohoo, and it just stuck with me. And I now have woohoo productions and um, all my branding is woohoo. And it's just been fun. You know, who doesn't want to whoop it up and woohoo it, right? I mean, it feels like it's a fun thing. There's even like guides online on how to do a proper yeah. Vicky woohoo. No, have you a, seen there's those? A lot of, it's kind of gone viral, but there's really a way and a technique behind it. So tell me, okay. what is the technique? So everybody in the audience, raise your right arm. I don't care if you're left hand or right hand, but it's got to be right hand. And you got to gotta put the motion in there and you got to go woohoo! You know, it just feels good, right? It feels good. And in this hard life that we all lead, like I don't care what you're doing, life is hard, right? It's not easy some days. I mean, some days I wake up going, holy balls, like can I do another day? I mean, I got so much stress on me. I got payroll, I got payroll texts, I got employees fighting with each other. I have, you know, issues with the cast. I've got all this ish stuff all the time. Brianna, the boys, you know, them relocating, me getting her a house. I bought Michael a house this year. It's like constant stress. I'm like, I'm a freaking girl in a man's world. I want respect, but I also want to learn how to put it away for a little bit and have fun. Because without having fun in life, what's this all worth? You gotta have Nothing. fun. You gotta have fun, right? And to that I say woohoo. Woohoo. And let's turn it over to the audience, please. Hey Vicky, you're my favorite housewife of oh, OC. Hi, honey. And I'm sorry about your mom. Oh, I know. And I'm Sucks. sorry about uh, that was crazy when yeah. you got that call. And I'm sorry about your girlfriends on the show. They Thank have you. a lot of time. Uh, they do. Um, you noted earlier, you said a four day trip, and then you said there's probably gonna be a fight, which is so funny because on Beverly Hills, one of the new cast members, Erica, when they went on the trip, she seemed t she had no idea it was a fight. So do you kind of give the new cast members on your show a heads up or let them learn? No, I don't ever anticipate a fight. I, that's the difference. I, I, I don't think there's gonna be a fight. I think they all have issues with me. My theory is this if they're not talking about me, they, I got something to worry about. Like, I am always the topic of conversation. Why? I don't want to be, but they, I, they're always talking about me. That means they obviously care about me or they wouldn't talk about me. I'm not invisible. I'm always relevant in some conversation. And I'm okay with it. Like, I don't care if you really love me or dig me. I, I, I love you, so one day you'll turn around and know that I'm a great friend. Like, I am a great friend. So I might piss you off sometimes, but I'm still a great friend. Right? Yeah. I mean, You're loyal. Right. You're outspoken. Right. So that's what happens. Next question, please. Hi, thanks for being here. Hi, um, Do you watch any other reality TV shows? You know what, I don't. I'm not a big TV watcher. Like I said, I work late. Um, if I get home at 11 from my office or 11 from a date, I'm gonna watch probably the news and stay current with current events or CNN. I just don't have time. I'm just running really hard. Like tomorrow morning, I leave at 5 a.m. here. I land at 10.30 LAX and I go right to my office. I have to be my first clients at noon. And then I have a noon, a two, a five. And then I have a seminar I'm speaking at tomorrow night for retirement planning. So that's a typical day for me. I'm up at the gym. I'm out. I'm going. And then by the time I hit the bed, it's like lights are out. It's usually one or two in the morning when I finally go to sleep. Next question. Hi. Um, Hi. I was recently watching one of the Bravo specials about the OC, and you see that there's so much turnover with the ladies. Do you think that there's anyone in hindsight who kind of got, like, an unfair edit and that, like, we didn't get to see the real housewife? You know, you know what? I have a bond with all the ladies. We actually were fortunate last Thursday to all be together. And I heard Gretchen's viewpoint inside to what happened with her and Tamara and why her demise happened and I felt sorry for her you know I love Gina Gina and I are uh, still friends we go out a lot because we're both members of the same country club in Kodo and you know I, it's, it's kind of like a sorority you know you, you, when you see each other it's like we had such great experiences but I think Bravo is really smart they know who they want to keep and they know who they don't and fortunately 11 years later they still like me and I respect Bravo I love Bravo and um, we've had a great ride and, you know, Andy and I have been knowing each other now 11 years and I think he respects me and knows that I'm always going to bring good TV and good reality stuff. I don't fake any of my storyline. I don't think something like, oh, what can I film this year? No, it's just follow me and chaos is going to happen. Like, no matter what I do, it's chaos. Like, it's not a normal life I lead. In, regardless of cameras or not, my life is chaos. My manager, Richard's here with me. He's like, you are a tornado everywhere you go. Like, I forget where I'm at. I'm 
forgetting something, I'm losing something. Like, it, like I get hit in the head when I'm not expecting it. It's just, it's always chaos. But it's, at the end of the day, I hope it's fun for the viewers to see that I don't pre-think my reality. I don't. I mean, I, it is, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And after this concussion, I have no idea what I did yesterday. So it's like, <laughs> like it's a whole new day every day because I don't know what I did yesterday. This, con have you guys ever had a concussion? No, have you, anybody out here had a concussion ever? No, I, I have my first major concussion, and it's like a new party every day in my head. It's like, oh, we, what are we doing today? I'm like, it's like 50 first yeah. dates. It's like, it's like, wow, didn't you remember what we did yesterday? I'm like, got nothing, you know, but it's coming back, and I, and I actually have fun with it, so. And last question, please. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. You mentioned earlier that you're one of the hardest working women you know. Are you inspired by any other hardworking women, or who are some other hardworking women you you know what? Uh, we're all hardworking in our own aspect, whether you're a housewife or not. You don't have to go to a job. The housewives are very hard. They got their children to raise, their houses to keep care of. But I'm inspired by my father. You know, my father, um, God rest his soul, really did not educate us girls. We, I, I have a two-year degree, and then I got married. Um, all my education has come from my own self in regards to my insurance business and all the continuing education and things like that. But my father taught us, you can have anything you want in life. You just got to work hard for it. And he, he only educated, and, and my brother has a degree, and my other sister um, went halfway through college. But I think that um, I just came from good Midwestern roots, born and raised in Chicago, we were not handed anything. At 16, I bought my first car. At 14, I had to get my first job. I've never not worked. So even when I had my kids, I brought the babies to the office, and I've worked. So for those of you that are working, women, you know how hard it is raising a family and taking care of your kids. It's not easy. And Brianna is a spitting image of me. I mean, she's an ER trauma nurse, and she started working right again after her babies were born. And I just like take a time off. She's like, Mom, I'm, I'm you. I, I, I have to bring money into this family. And um, I understand where she's coming from because I just know work and I enjoy what I do. So um, I don't want to emulate one person. I just want to be the best that I can be for my family. You know? And The Real Housewives of Orange County comes back tonight on Bravo. It does. And don't forget to watch me on Watch What Happens Live with Andy tonight. Awesome. I have no idea what it's going to be like, but it's the launch of the season, and those callers, you better be nice to me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicki. Thanks for having me.